Well, good Wednesday morning, middle of the week. Want to remind you, we have Plaid Kids today at four o'clock, so you won't want to miss that. It's actually about the story of Job. Uh, so we're going to see how Miss Donna does with that, because that's a very detailed story, but she's brought it down so the kids can understand it. <clears throat> All righty. Now we're looking at uh, the seven uh, habits, the seven disciplines that a Christian needs to have for an abundant life, all right, that we find in Scripture. And remember, W was witness, right? O was other people's encourager, right? R was receive and give discipleship. The S was Scripture, read it, memorize it. And of course, yesterday we heard H, which was having a heart of worship. Today, we're going to be looking at the letter I. And the letter I is individual time with God. So often I see Christians really struggle with this one a lot of times. They, uh, they spend time with the others. They do good. They even encourage and they do all the other things. But when it comes to being alone with God, for whatever reason, they struggle with it. In fact, I'll be honest, sometimes I struggle with it. All right. And uh, just about the time you're saying, I'm going to have some quiet time, an interruption comes along or, or something happens that you have to deal with. Uh, and that's, that's Satan's tricks. He makes us do that because that way we won't have the power of that Holy Spirit to be able to accomplish the things that God has set forth for us. And, uh, uh, and you need to really plan it. You need to really put it in your schedule to make sure you do. I have a brother that he does it every day. And I see him without his quiet time and with his quiet time, totally different person. So I really get it. Uh, you know, our best example, our blueprint was Jesus. If you'll notice in scripture, there were numerous times where Jesus went alone by himself. He actually left the people, but he also left his apostles. So he could uh, just spend that time, that quality time with his father. Now, if Jesus needed to do it, how much more do we need to do so? All right. I'm going to pick up in uh, Mark chapter 6, verses 45 and 46. It says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went on the mountainside to pray. So Jesus went all by himself. He sent his uh, apostles to Bethsaida, <clears throat> all right, and said, hey, listen, I'll catch up with you. Now, I'll tell you when this was. This was right after he fed the 5,000 people. So he, he, had, he had taught them. He had preached to them. He had, he had, he had shared, you know, the, uh, the things of the, the kingdom. They got fed and he took his apostles and he shipped them off and he spent time with God. How important is that? Well, I'll tell you what happened right afterwards. He walked on the water to meet him. So having that time with the father is very, very important. Now, there's a lot of ways to do it. All right. And I, I have a lot of people that just, they struggle with this. All right. Because they're saying, how, what should I do? What should I do when I spend time with God? Well, every one of us is different. It's that individual time with the Father as individual and unique as what we are. All right? Uh, I know those that uh, they just need to have total quiet. They want to have total quiet. They put themselves. I actually know people when they talk about prayer closets, they actually get in a closet where they have total quiet to spend time with God. Uh, some others, they, they just put on praise music and they spend time just praising God and spending that time, all right? Uh, and others, they get into the Psalms and that's where they, the way they do it and they start their day and they read their Psalms. None of those are wrong. Every one of them are right. If you do all of them or one of them, they're all right. Or if you do something else, as long as it's that quality time with God. Uh, I always tell people when they ask me what you do, I say, well, you know what? If you don't know where to start, I would start in the Psalms. There is a, uh, there's Psalms chapter 8, which I absolutely love. And it really gives me time to spend with God and remember who He is and remember our relationship with each other. And it goes like this. Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of your children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, 
the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you, you, Lord God, have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands and put everything under their feet. Can you imagine? We, so when you're talking to God and you're reading this, read it out loud because you see his awesomeness. It gets everything right in your mind where he's at. Verse 7, as I pick up, all flocks and herds and animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the path of the seas. You have put everything under the feet of man, everything under your, those who worship you and believe in you and, 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 and lift you up, all right? And we do not deserve to be in your presence is what this says. And we finish out in verse 9. It says, Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all the world. So when you have that individual time with God, if you don't know how to start, sometimes we don't, okay? Start with that. Go to Psalms chapter 8 and read it out loud. Because once you do that, you'll be in the mood to pray. You'll be in the mood to praise. You'll be in the mood to spend time with your Heavenly Father who loves you so very much, considering He created everything. And He knows every hair on your head, though mine are a lot less than they used to be. All right, he knows it, and he chooses to have a relationship with us. How humbling is that? Get that individual time. Heavenly Father, we again, we thank you. You are such an awesome God, and when we realize the power of who you are, what you have created, what you have done, and how, how little we are compared to you, we are humbled. And we just ask you, Lord God, that we would find that time to have individual time with you, to walk with you, to talk with you, to praise you, to lift you up. You deserve that. And Lord God, we know as we do that, you strengthen us, you fill us with your power, that Holy Spirit power, that Jesus Christ power. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great hump day. God bless.